for a very quick moment, he was happy because he realized that he was still alive. But almost as soon as that thought was finished forming in his brain, he realized that she wasn't. In flashes, he remembered the accident and all of the sudden, a dark, looming, heavy cloud of grief settled around his mind and heart. It was a hard recovery, but eventually he went home. And everywhere in his home, he saw echoes of her, and he had to leave. It was too much. Nowhere, every place he turned, he could be filled with a memory of something that had happened, or the gnawing pain of a memory that would never be. So he decided he would leave. He sold his place and he left and he decided he was going to travel the world. He'd always kind of wanted to travel the world and see some of the most amazing things he could think of. And they are standing in front of the huge sphinx. Still, he was surrounded by this cloud. No matter where he went, all across the world, still it traveled with him. So he decided, okay, I'm not going to travel. I'm going to buy a beautiful piece of land far, far off in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to meditate. I'm going to pray. I'm going to dig deep into these practices that at one point served me and touched me. And so he did. He had this beautiful, huge plot of land, not far away from people, but enough space that he didn't really have to see people if he didn't want to. And he sat and he meditated and he prayed as hard as he could, but still that cloud lingered around him. Even after he had moved through a lot of the grief and the sadness at losing his beloved, still he was filled with this chasm. He felt purposeless. He was so sad. So he decided he started building a labyrinth around the place where he sat and meditated. Built a beautiful, huge, geometric pattern. And he walked it every day so slowly. And through a tiny gap in the wall, a little girl watched him. It wasn't too far away from this school and she came and she watched him walk every day and he seemed so sad and she looked at this beautiful amazing pattern but it was all gray and brown and so one day she brought him a tiny marigold a beautiful bursting flower and he sat there in the middle of the labyrinth and he was meditating praying deeply so focused and she walked straight up to him across all the lines You're supposed to walk in this whole big, long, crazy pattern. And she walked straight across the lines. And he looked up, and he was visibly rattled. It's not the way you're supposed to walk a labyrinth, he thought. He hadn't seen anybody in a long time. He had his groceries delivered to the door. He didn't really have to deal with any people. And it rattled him to see this little girl walk up. But she had this beautiful flower, and she said, I think it could use a little color, she said. And that flower and that girl just broke through his haze and the cloud, the despair just parted just a little bit. And he said, well, where? And she said, everywhere. And he chuckled. And so he and this girl, they started planting flowers all along this labyrinth. And she started inviting friends of hers. And pretty soon, there was a class that came from the school. And every new person that saw the beautiful garden they were creating, the clouds started to part a little bit more and a little bit more. And he started feeling better and better until one day he realized what he had to do. And he met with the people from the school, with the PTA and all the people who helped run the school. And he said, I want to give you this garden. I want to make sure that this garden is available for generations and generations of school children to come. And they had a huge celebration and he almost didn't even notice that the cloud of despair and doom had entirely dissipated because he saw in all of these children's faces as they worked on the garden, as they walked the labyrinth, as they took in the beauty that they had created together, he saw their happiness and he knew that hundreds and thousands of more would know that happiness, that this would outlive him. And he knew purpose and he knew wholeness and it was good. Amen.